If you'll join me this afternoon in Isaiah, the 46th chapter. And I'm going to take my jacket off if that's okay. tends to get real warm up here with these lights that we have to use. Without those lights, uh, this area tends to look a little dark on the picture, you know. So I have to use the, and boy, those track lights throw a lot of heat. Isaiah 46, we're going to read today verses 8 through 13. Isaiah 46, verses 8 through 13, and the King James text today reads, Remember this, and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind. O ye transgressors, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel, from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me one more moment, let's just go to the Lord one more time. Master, we love you, God, and we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you, God, for this sacred document which you've given the church that it might be a source of faith and encouragement, inspiration, and hope. Master, the preacher today needs the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the touch from heaven, that I might deliver a word to the people of God that will be of benefit to them. Lord, let it lift them up. Let it inspire and encourage and uplift. Let our faith today, Lord, reach new heights and new planes in you than it is ever before known. Touch not merely my lips of clay, but touch as well the heart, the hearing of every hearer. Those watching live online, those who will watch later by reason of the internet, let us receive today the word of God with gladness. For we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm talking to us today for a while on the topic, Judging from the Middle. I know after that text I read, you're saying, how in the world is he going to get that out of that text? I think you'll understand. It is easy today for we human beings to look upon one another in the present as though we were a completed project and a final product. But the truth is, every child of God who is genuinely on this journey of faith is in the middle of their development. We are not today what we were yesterday, and we will not be tomorrow what we are today. Many of us live tormented lives as memories of our past weaknesses and failures haunt us. The enemy loves to vex us with images of actions and conduct from our past. 
He is forever trying to make us believe that who we were yesterday has some influence or some bearing upon who we are today. But it doesn't. In the end, who we are or where we are today does not even matter. Listen to me, folks. Does not even matter to the Lord. He doesn't care about where you're at today. His concern is where we'll end up. Hallelujah. He's worried about where we're going to finish this journey, not where we're at in the process of the journey. Hallelujah. Oh, if we're going to be saved, the Word of God said, He that believeth unto the end shall be saved. So it's all about keeping your faith intact in spite of whatever attacks, whatever the enemy brings against us. And believe me, in today's world, the enemy is constantly coming against faith. And oh, yes. I'm telling you, I've, I've been seeing all kinds of articles online, and I don't know why they're coming up in my news feed, but um, they're, they're very anti-religious, very anti-God. And I'll be honest with you, it's really been kind of surprising to me. One thing you're going to learn about me is, number one, we ain't mega. That's right. All right. We're not Christian nationalists. No. You're not going to find that foolishness in this place. You're not going to hear me preaching what party you have to belong to and which party is the Christian party and which party isn't the Christian party. That foolishness doesn't go on here, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't play those games. All right. That's not the mission of the church. That's not what God has called us to do. That's, right. That's not the message he's called us to preach. He's called us to preach Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's the message that we preach around here. But I want to tell you that a lot of times when we're dealing with people and when we're talking with people, we have a bad habit as human beings of, of looking at them as though they are today everything they're ever going to be. And what I mean by that is, I, there's a lady online I was just watching the other day. This lady online, and turns out she was transgender. I didn't even realize she was transgender. To look at her, you, you'd never know. But she had come into contact with a fellow online who was very much mega and you know very much conservative and what have you and he had some very strong opinions about things and her opinions and beliefs and his opinions and beliefs were about as far apart as they could get and this particular individual I don't know why she did it because how many times when you read something that somebody like this posts and you'll kind of sign them off and you'll say, oh, well, you know, they're one of those people. They're one of those folks. They're going to believe what they believe no matter what anybody ever said. You know, they're always going to be like they are now. See, we love to do that. We love to look at people like they are complete, like they're, they're today what they're always going to be. But this woman decided she was going to engage this fellow, you know. So she began to talk to him, and she began to get involved in conversations with him. And over the course of time, he began to understand her perspective. He began to see what she was saying and kind of get what she was saying. And at one point, he made a comment about transgendered people. And he said, you know, I don't get this. You know, if you're born a man, then you're a man. And if you're born a woman, then you're a woman. And blah, 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 you, know. you know how those folks sometimes do. And she wrote in and she said, you know, we've been talking for a long time now. And I like you. You're a nice person and everything. We don't agree on everything, she said. But what I'm curious about is how many transgender people do you know? And of course, you can imagine he didn't know any, you know. So he said, well, I don't think I know any. And she said, oh, yes, you do. She said, you've been communicating with one now for about a year or two. And he said, what? He had no idea that she was transgender. 
and all of a sudden his thought processes were challenged you know all of a sudden he had to rethink the way that he had always looked at the transgendered issue why because in dealing with a transgendered person by not knowing she was transgender he was just dealing with her as a human being mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he realized something these people are people that's right <laughs> it's yeah. that simple these folks are just folks you know well long story short this man wound up going through a complete transformation in his thinking in his thought processes he even went so far as to leave the republican party and join the other guys <gasps> the bad guys as we're told they are, you know. You see, not everybody is where they're always going to be. We have a habit of judging people like that. Mm -hmm. We look at people in the church. We look at one another as people of God. And how many times do we look at one another and we get aggravated? As the pastor, I have to deal, not these days, obviously, <laughs> But when I have people, and I have, I have pastored hundreds of people, you have to deal all the time with people who have conflicting personalities, people who have conflicting viewpoints, you know. And I've had more people come to me over the years and say, I just can't stand that person over there. Boy, I just don't like that person over there. You know, boy, the, the way they do, the way they act. Blah, 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 blah. And I sit there and I think to myself, yeah, and there's a dozen people in the church who look at you the same identical way. <laughs> you look at them like you're the only person in the church that looks at somebody else and isn't crazy about them. But unfortunately, as the pastor, I've had to hear others say the same thing about you. And the reason is because we look at one another, and what we see in the here and now is what we tend to think will always be. In our primary text today, God declares in Isaiah 46, verse number 10, He said, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things, listen, that are not yet done. See, the Word of God tells us that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows when He starts a relationship with you, He knows where you're going to wind up. He knows what you're going to become. He knows the changes and the transformations that are going to take place in your life, even though you and I aren't even aware of what we're going to be. I remember as a young person, I was all of 12, and God had called me to preach when I was 8. And I was about 12, and I was down in the bedroom that my father had built in our basement in our house in New England. And I'm down there, and I used to go down there and study after school. I love to study the Word of God. I, I've been very seriously studying Scripture since I was preteen. And I, I would study the Word of God. I would pray. I'd talk to the Lord. I'd worship. I used to watch Tammy Faye and Jim on the PTL Club. That show used to be one of the most positive Christian programs on TV. You didn't hear them preaching against everybody. You didn't hear them condemning and criticizing everybody. It was one of the only Christian programs that really approached things from a very positive place. And I love Tammy Faye singing. That girl, every song she sang was unique to her. It was... Uh, and encouraging, uplifting. She always sang songs 
that could encourage and inspire people to hold on to God's hand, to keep believing no matter what struggle, no matter what battle, no matter what fight they might be going through today. And I was down there in my room, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart, and He said, Do you know what you're going to preach? People say, well, how do you know it was God talking to you? Well, I'll tell you how. Because number one, I can't imagine why I'd ask myself that question. Mm. Out of the clear blue sky, the question came to me. Do you know what you're going to preach? And I had been born and raised in a small Pentecostal church in southern New England and I, I you know I was part of the assemblies of God and I knew everything the assemblies of God preached so I said yes Lord I know what I'm going to preach I was born and raised in the assemblies of God so I know what I'm going to preach and boy I was just full of myself and you know all kind of, all the pride oozing out of my pores and then the spirit of the Lord said to me I'll never forget it as long as I live, because boy, it's really proved itself over the years. Then the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, Oh, no, you don't. And I said, I don't. Why would God tell? Why would He ask me if I knew what I was going to preach? And then when I told Him, Oh, yeah, I know what I'm going to preach. I know exactly what I'm going to preach. Why would He then say to me, Oh, no, you don't? Well, I'll tell you why. Because between then and now, there's been a whole lot of change going on. Between then and now, there's been a whole lot of transformation. Between then and now, there's been a whole lot of growth, and I believe progress. Mm -hmm. I believe that I've moved in a very positive direction, in a good direction. But I am not today what I was in that bedroom at the age of 12. And guess what? I don't know how much longer I have on this earth, but chances are when I finally exit this life, I probably won't be exactly as I am today either. Amen. Why? Because every single day of our lives... We are in the middle. We're never at the end till we get to the end. Every day of our lives, we're in the middle. You say, in the middle? In the middle of what? Well, I'll tell you what we're in the middle. We're in the middle of something that until we run out of tomorrows, we're always in the middle of yesterday and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? What I was yesterday, I may very well be just a little bit different today than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, I may be just a little bit more different than I was today. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Some changes, some growth, some development, some advancement and progress is slow. But you know the old saying, slow and steady wins the race, amen. Oh, I'm going to tell you, God has called us to be a people of movement. He's called us to be a people of advancement. He's called us, you know, how many Christians you know, they just get dug in somewhere and they won't move. Hmm. And boy, they think they're doing God some big favor. They think that they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I'm supposed to dig in, bless God, and never move from this spot. Oh, really? The only problem with that is you're assuming that where you're digging in is a place of perfection. You're assuming that where you're digging in is a place of completion. That there's nothing more to know. There's nothing more to learn. There's no more growth to be had. There's no more progress to be realized. There's no more advancement for you. Because after all, baby, you've arrived. That's a dangerous place for a believer to be. Even the Apostle Paul 
said, I do not count myself as having arrived. Hallelujah. Even Paul, my God, the Lord used Paul to write the majority of the New Testament. If anybody on this planet should be able to brag that he's arrived, you'd think it'd be Paul. But Paul knew better. He said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> if there's anything I've learned about God, there's always something else to learn. <laughs> if there's anything I've learned about God, there's always something more to know. If there's anything I've learned about God, there's always advancement. There's always growth available to me. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, the holiness uh, people in our world today love to quote this scripture. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And then in the next breath they'll tell you, this is why a woman has to have hair flowing down her back. This is why a woman must wear dresses down to her toes. This is why we don't wear makeup and we don't do this and we don't do that. And this is why we don't smoke and we don't go to movies and we don't go to... Uh, 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 amusement parks and things of this nature and all these rules and all these regulations to them constitute holiness and they say without holiness no man shall see the Lord um, wrong wrong it's not without holiness no man shall see the Lord and I'll tell you how I know that. Because the Word of God tells us that all our righteousness is before the Lord as filthy rags. So God cannot be saying to us, you must be holy before you'll be able to see me. No, that's not what's said here at all. Look at the passage. It said, follow peace with all men and holiness so what what is he telling us to do concerning holiness is he telling us to possess it or to pursue it he said follow peace with all men and holiness he's saying pursue peace with all men and pursue holiness so what god has called us to is not to possess some man-made standard of righteousness and holiness, but rather he has called us to always live in pursuit of holiness. So every day we desire that tomorrow, God willing, I'll look a little more like Jesus than I did today. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And hopefully today I'll look a little bit more like Jesus than I did yesterday. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? That is what this passage is telling us. Saying we're to be in pursuit. I remember the old movie. Some of you all may remember this. One of my favorites way back in the day. It was called Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> One of my favorite comedic actors was Jackie Gleason. I was one of his biggest fans. I love me some Jackie Gleason. Of course, he played the sheriff, you know, Buford T. Justice. And he loved to get on his CP. And he loved to let the bandit know, I'm in hot pursuit. That's what God's called us to. He has called us to pursue advancement to pursue growth to pursue development to live our lives every day so that every day we're in the middle we're between yesterday and tomorrow and what we are today is not what we were yesterday and what we are today is not probably what we're going to be tomorrow not if we're in pursuit of something Amen. Because if you're in pursuit, you are forever and always moving forward. We are not called to possess holiness as holiness belongs 
to the Lord. That's what the Word of God says. It is an attribute that can only be ascribed to our God. But we are called to walk in pursuit of holiness. We live and strive to be like our God and our Savior. Every day we ought to be growing. Every day we ought to be changing. Every day we ought to be advancing, moving forward. That's why we chose the name Forward Christian Life Center. Because it's all about moving forward. You know, there's some stuff the church has believed for eons about certain issues. And we're saying, hey, folks, it's time to move forward. It's time to get past being stuck in the mud on some of these issues. Oh, the church has had a position on LGBT people for eons. And it hasn't been a good one. It hasn't been a positive one. But you know what? If you do a little bit of research, if you do a little bit of study, if you'll spend a little bit of time, you'll find out that your position, quite frankly, was wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us to move forward. It's time for us to get out of the mud. It's time for us to stop being stuck in one place, convinced that we know it all, we have it all, we possess it all. And humble ourselves in the sight of God and recognize, no, there's more to get. There's more understanding to be had. There's more knowledge to be gleaned of my telling the truth. Mm -hmm. There's more revelation to be experienced. In Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 22, the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead. Now listen to this next phrase. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. So our God calls things that aren't something. And he calls them something. Why? Is it, he just like to hear his own voice? Does he like to say crazy things? No. Because he knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So what yes, he does is he calls us what we're going to be in the end even though yet we haven't achieved that. Even though as of yet we haven't gotten there. Oh my Hallelujah. goodness. You remember his meeting with Gideon? Mm -hmm. Here was poor Gideon. Gideon was far from being a soldier, far from being a leader. And yet the Lord appears to Gideon and declares to Gideon, Hey Gideon, man of war! What? Who are you talking to? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be like walking into a bakery and walking up to the counter and saluting the guy behind the counter and saying, Good afternoon, General! What? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not a general. But God knew what Gideon was capable of, and God knew what he was going to use Gideon to do, and he knew what Gideon was to become, and he calls those things which be not as though they were. He goes on to say, Paul does in Romans 4, verse 18, who against hope, speaking of Abram, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. 
He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he, meaning God, had promised, he, meaning God, was also able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. The Lord credits us with righteousness today in response to our faith. So long as we are moving in the direction of God-likeness, we are imputed with righteousness. God calls us today what we will not even be until after the resurrection. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. But he calls us today righteous. Thank you. He calls us today holy. He calls us today sanctified. Glory to God. Even though we will not realize those things until after the resurrection. In Romans 14, 7 through 13, the Apostle Paul writes, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose, and revived that he might be Lord both of the living and, excuse me, of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Right. My goodness, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. While there are some believers who seem to be frozen in place, never changing and forever stalled in their progress, the bulk of sincere believers are always on the move forward. Some may move slower than others and some may move far more quickly. But the key is in the movement, not in the distance that we've traveled. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad God doesn't put a requirement before you that you've got to cover so many yards in this amount of time? No. He just says, just move forward. Just keep moving forward. As long as it doesn't matter if you're running or walking, just keep moving forward. Hallelujah. Just keep making progress. In Philippians, excuse me, uh, so long as we are running in the race, the Lord sees us as winners. We only lose when we stop altogether, or worse yet, decide to turn back and go backward. In Philippians 3, 12 through 14, the word of the Lord said, Not as though, this is Paul, not as though I had already attained either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So here's Paul. He wrote the majority of the New Testament epistles and he said, folks, I'm not standing here telling you I've already achieved. I'm not standing here telling you I've already got to where we're going. No, no. He said, but I'm moving forward. I'm always moving forward. Oh, hallelujah. That's all God asks of us, is that we commit to moving forward. He said, But this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind. If there's anything that trips up a lot of believers, if there's anything that causes many Christians to lose out with God, it's not anything in their present. It's stuff from their past. They get hung up on stuff from their past. They let stuff from yesterday haunt them like an invisible ghost in the here and now. Oh, but child of God, listen to me. You ought not to be judging from the middle. Huh. You shouldn't be making judgments about anybody else and you shouldn't be making judgments about yourself when you're still between yesterday and tomorrow. When every day you're different. You're not what you were yesterday, so why would you let the ghosts of the past haunt you today? Is that who you still are? Well, no, I don't still do those things. I don't still go those places. I don't still treat people that way. I still don't act like that. Well, then why in the world would you let that bother you today? You're in the middle. Glory to God, you're between yesterday and tomorrow. That means you're on the road to progress. You're on the road to growth and revelation. 1 John 3, verses 1 through 3, the Apostle John wrote, Beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Oh my, what is John saying? He said, we're called the sons of God today and yet we don't even look like we're going to look one day. Hallelujah. We haven't even reached our final destination. And yet, God still calls us today in the here and now, His sons. Why? Because He calls those things which be not as though they were. Oh, hallelujah. He said, everybody that has this hope, and I'm paraphrasing, He said, just keeps moving forward. Keeps pushing toward that goal. Keeps driving toward the mark. Lastly, this afternoon, this is my final scripture, I promise. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 58. The Apostle Paul says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. One day we're going to be very different than we are today. When we finally reach that point where in this life there is no tomorrow, when we finally get to the end of our journey, that is the point that God's concerned about. Are we going to reach the finish line with our faith intact? Are we going to reach the finish line with victory in our soul? Are we going to reach the finish line having begun a relationship with God and still holding to His hand? He said, that's all I'm concerned about. I'm not so much worried about the journey. I'm not so much worried about the in-between. I'm not so much worried about the middle. I'm just concerned that as each day comes and passes, that you've moved forward just a touch, just an inch. You've allowed yourself to learn. You've allowed yourself to grow. You've allowed yourself to move forward a little bit. There are some people who struggle with issues like uh, sobriety. There are people who struggle with addiction issues. And I would encourage them today to look at things this way and understand things this way. Instead of looking for God to simply change everything instantaneously, all at once, why don't you just begin to ask the Lord, Lord, let me wake up tomorrow a little less troubled by this issue than I was yesterday. And then... Today I'll be a little better than I was yesterday, and tomorrow I'll be a little better than I was today. Oh, hallelujah. If you know, it's one day at a time, isn't it? Isn't that what they teach in AA? Uh -huh. It's all about taking one day at a time. We always, we want everything to be done, and we want it to be done instantly, instantaneously. But sometimes God says, I'm trying to help you learn faith. I'm, I'm trying to help you to learn to trust me. I'm trying to help you to rely upon my grace. What you need to do is just believe me for progress and advancement one day at a time. Oh my goodness. Oh children, I want to tell you today, as believers, we tend to look at one another. We tend to look at ourselves for that matter. As though what we see today is what will always be. But the reality is we are judging from the middle. We are judging from that place between yesterday and tomorrow. And there's a whole lot of change goes on. Oftentimes between yesterday and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And oh hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that today? Yes. Amen. I would like to...